So I am Kai Shakir. I am from the Middle Technical University in Baghdad. Actually, I would like to share my project that I work on uh, in, the, in the National University of Ireland, Galway. Um, I just finished last year uh, in December. So I get back to Iraq. Um, but unfortunately, the, the pandemic is really affecting everyone, uh, everyone in this world. However, uh, I really would like to thank the organizer for uh, allowing me to participate in this conference. So, uh, yeah, so I, I'll talk a little bit about my project, uh, which uh, I will actually display it in as a poster and not in slides. Hopefully that will work. So, yeah, I will talk about tight surface graphs. Um, well, um, these uh, kinds of graphs actually is very important um, uh, for various reasons. For example, let's take, let's, let's motiv motivate the work on the tight graphs itself. So the tight and sparse graphs are very interesting uh, kinds of graphs in, uh, for example, in graph theory and uh, what's called graph decomposition, for example, naturally I'm saying that um, a graph is k uh, edge disjoint uh, uh, trees if and only if it is k k tight graphs so that's one one uh, i mean one application for such kind of graphs also the tight and sparse graphs have been used in uh, the rigidity theory or the geometric rigidity theory so um so that work actually actually i did under my supervisor james crookshank from the national university of ireland galway and also we collaborated with the two persons in Lancaster University at that time with Derek Kitson and Stephen Parr. So, yeah, so I will talk about uh, that class of graphs which is called the, uh, well, tight surface graphs. Uh, so, um, I guess uh, most of the audience knows what surface graphs or topology graph, uh, which they are concise. So, surface graph is, uh, suppose we have a surface, and then I can actually define the surface graph or sigma graph here as an embedded of an abstract graph. So I'm dealing with an abstract graph, which is embedded in the, in the, uh, in the surface without edge uh, processing. Uh, as you know, we have to deal with faces because uh, we, have, we are dealing with the topological graph. So a face, as you know, is, I mean, a face of a surface graph is uh, is a connected component of the image of the surface itself um, minus the, the, the abstract graph. Uh, so here actually I have example about the surface graph, which is a torus graph. So on the figure one, we have a graph, which is just an agra uh, a graph. I mean, it's abstract graph, maybe I can call it. And, uh, and in figure two, we just embed that graph in the torus. So right now the left hand side became a torus graph. And as you know, this is this graph has just only one face, and that face is orthogonal face. Now um, I would like actually to build a class of graphs, um, especially for well, these graphs are called the sparsity and tidy graph. So let's say uh, just know something about the, this kind of graphs. So suppose I have a graph called gamma here, and I have positive uh, integer, say, k. So we define this function, uh, gamma sub k of gamma, big gamma, which is equal to k by the number of vertices of the, the graph gamma minus the number of the edges of this graph. So let's define the sparsity of a graph, gamma, say. So suppose I have a k non-negative integers, uh, such that k is, k is less than or equal, uh, sorry, K L is less than or equal K. We say that the gamma is a K L sparse if for every non P sum graph uh, omega of that graph uh, gamma, uh, then gamma sub K of omega is greater than or equal L. Uh, this actually what's saying here if I take any non empty subgraph, uh, say omega, then the number of the edges of that uh, graph, uh, of that subgraph, uh, it will be no, no more than the number of vertices of the subgraph times k minus l. So this is the sparsity of a graph. And the tightness of a graph, uh, it is just a graph, uh, uh, sorry, a k l sparse, 
and the number of the edges itself of the, the big graph is equal to uh, k by the number of vertices of the graph minus l. So if I have uh, this additional uh, condition satisfied, then I would say uh, my graph is kl uh, type graph. So here I have uh, uh, some examples about uh, various kinds of uh, type graphs. So here I have two two type graph. If I actually start, uh, if I will uh, apply the the two conditions here, so then l and k are actually equal to two both of them then i will get a two two type here i have two zero type here i have two three type this kind of graph is so uh, so we have this expectation for a framework in the plane saying that a framework is rigid if and only if the corresponding uh, graph for the that framework is two three type so this is very powerful uh, Theorem uh, and correction to more Here I have to now because I want to do the so I need to. to Actually, I also a set of um, of small graphs. I will call it later reducible graphs. If I if I will have uh, these two uh, tools, then I can actually build my my class of uh, enters. So. The, the topological and inductive moves or operations that we worked on here, actually there are three kinds of them. The first one is called bygone contraction. So if I have my, my, gra my circuit graph G uh, here and has actually at least one bygone, then that bygone actually I can contract it to a vertex. So uh, I just uh, <coughs> identify these two vertices together, then we uh, Eliminate these two pieces of this is uh, also we have triangle contractions, so we can actually um, contract that that triangle uh, and to an edge as uh, in this green uh, illustration. And also we work on quadrilateral contraction. So whenever we see contract, uh, I mean uh, sorry, uh, quadrilateral uh, face, then we can actually contracted uh, contracted in this way so we contract these two sorry we, we identify these two vertices together and we eliminate or delete two edges so we will get a path of length uh, two so uh, some results that we got about these two uh, these three uh, uh, moves so especially for the first two so gp here is the graph that's actually uh, resulted from uh, contracting that bygone. So we see uh, that GP is uh, 2L sparse if and only if G itself is 2L sparse. And uh, if G is a 2 2 type sparse, uh, sorry, if uh, G is a 2 2 uh, sparse and T is a triangle face in that graph, then there is some contraction of that tri triangle, which yields 2 2 type graph. So whenever we see a uh, diagon, so we can contract it, and the resulting uh, graph will be 2L-type, two, two uh, sorry, 2L-type, two uh, L sparse graph. And whenever we will see a triangle, then we can contract that triangle, and then we will get a uh, 2 2-type two, two sparse graph. Uh, we have actually an issue with the quadrilateral contraction. So here we have this, uh, uh, an ex uh, the example here, we saying that not every, Quadrilateral contraction preserve two two type uh, two two sparsity and the torus graph because uh, actually I will uh, talk more about the torus graph rather than other surface graphs. So if we see here, this is just a, a torus graph, and that's that. Uh, I mean this uh, representation is just a rectangle representation. We see here we have a quad or quadrilateral face. 
maybe you can contract it but if we contracted this uh, uh, quadrilateral face then we will get a loop so if we if, for example if we contract or identify these two vertices i mean the blue two vertices then we'll get um, a loop and the loop is not uh, doesn't satisfy the sparsity i mean two to sparsity the same if we identify the two vertices, I mean the red two vertices here, we'll get another loop, and loop are not allowed in two two types. So this is, uh, these actually the three uh, uh, inductive moves that we will work on. The, the other tool that we will need to build our class of graphs is to find the small graphs in, in our class. And we'll call that them actually irreducible graphs. So we have to find the, all the reducible graphs if we would like really to build uh, our class of, say here, uh, two two type torsi graphs. So uh, let me just define the what what we meant by uh, two two type uh, reducible graphs. So a two two type torus uh, graph G is reducible if G has no bygone triangle or contractible uh, quadrilateral. So, for example, that example that I just showed here, sorry, uh, this one is irreducible because I don't have any that, uh, bygone or triangle, nor triangle, and although I have a quadrilateral face here, but that's not contracted. So, this is one irreducible graph that I have to find uh, it, then we will be able to build our uh, class of graphs. So, uh, the, the one of the important results that we got uh, is the following. G has at most uh, two quadrilateral faces. G here, I mean, two two type torus, uh, a reducible graph. So we know uh, from this uh, from this uh, result that our graph or our irreducible graph will have at most two quad. And this will actually facilitate uh, the computations that we will need to find all the reducible graphs in our class. Then we got the, the main result in our project, which saying that G or the two two tight um, two two tight torsi graph has at reducible graph has at most eight vertices, and that actually leads to get an idea that uh, our uh, list of reducible graphs are finite in many isomorph isomorphism classes of such graphs. And then uh, the problem here is, okay, we know that there are finitely many reducible graphs, but the problem is how to find all of them. This is the main issue that we faced at that time. So I actually use computational hand first to find all such uh, reducible graphs. And after um, a lot of computations, I got exactly 116 uh, And then we were suspicious about this number, and also we were suspicious about the, I mean, the uh, the structure of such graphs that we found. So then we built an algorithm uh, to check whether we got the the real number and the exact uh, number of the, of the list of the reducible graphs. And after, after that, we actually we checked it and we found the two results that we got from computational hands and from the, the, the algorithms that used are concise. So, so this is actually good. And the list is, uh, I mean, this list is exhausted. So I have 116. Actually, uh, here, uh, well, the, the other problem that we faced is how to, um, how to actually to display all these graphs. Although I am I'm here actually just displaying the name or the symbols of such graphs, but I actually, I have them, uh, I, mean, I mean, I have the exact structure of each graphs uh, as uh, my database. So here, for example, G11 uh, means that there are only one uh, with one vertex. And G12, uh, which means I have only one irreducible two two type graph with two vertices. Here I have what we found actually, there are two uh, reducible graphs with the three vertices, 
and with the further seeds we have nine. Uh, with the five we got uh, 23. We with the six, which is most, uh, which is really very hard to find them, but I found them, and they were exactly uh, 47 and uh, already sold graphs. And with seven vertices, we got 27, and with eight, we we were fortunate to find only uh, eight ver uh, sorry, six uh, early photographs. So after that, uh, okay, uh, this is the uh, we actually we were able to build the class of two too tight uh, uh, two too tight uh, torus graphs, and this actually ends our project, uh, which actually shown that. Uh, we can actually build any two two type graphs from one of these 116 by a sequence of the three of the three uh, topological inductive ones that I uh, talked about uh, earlier. Then, uh, oh, before that, uh, let me show some of my examples about such graphs. For example, this one uh, is. Uh, both of them actually reducible graphs with three vert uh, with four vertices. Uh, however, the the underlying graph uh, actually for each of them they are uh, isomorphism to each other. And th these are actually also reducible graphs with three vertices, and they each of them they uh, has um, one face, and that face is orthogonal face. If you just count it, so you will find it is just one face of uh, degree. Uh, eight. Also, I have here an example about uh, an irreducible graph with six vertices. And here you can see that we have uh, two quadrilateral faces. And I just mentioned before uh, one of our main results saying that uh, my irreducible graph will have at most two uh, quadrilateral faces. Uh, so that's by, by finding all the irreducible graphs, we end the project. And uh, I can show you some of uh, these uh, reducible graphs. So this is with one vertex. This is with two uh, vertices. I had only uh, one of such a graph. Here with the three with the uh, three vertices. Also, I have here with four vertices. So if you see, I I found all of such reducible graphs, and I have their uh, database. I mean, in uh, the algorithm and even uh, their graphs shown in this case. Here uh, with five vertices, also I have 23. With uh, with six vertices, as I mentioned before, it is very it was very hard to find uh, to find all such graphs because I have six vertices. I have a lot of uh, possible cases to build them, uh, but. Uh, we were fortunate to find all of them. And uh, yeah, with the, so I have here, as I mentioned, uh, 47 graphs. Um, then the result that we got actually, we just um, employed an, uh, an application, a geometric application. So that's called contacts of circle arcs representation. So let me just define it. So a CCA or, co or contacts of circle arcs representation of a surface graph G is a progression of circle, circular arcs embedded in the surface so that the graph induced by the contacts between the arcs is isomorphic uh, to G. Uh, here we have, uh, well, this is uh, results uh, saying that every 2 2 type of plane graph admits uh, contacts of circle arcs representation in the Euclidean plane. But before, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, but uh, because we actually found um, our main results saying that every two two tight graphs can be built from, from, 100, from 116 graphs by the three topological uh, moves that I uh, talked about, uh, then we employed the theorem to prove the, this theorem, which saying that every 2-2 tight torus graph admits CCA representation of that torus. 
And uh, from that, we got really nice result showing that every two to type torus uh, graph admits CCA representation. And we use the, and I mean, we use uh, uh, the result that we got from the previous computations to prove uh, the previous theorem. And this is just uh, an explanation about how, uh, how we use the contractions uh, to prove the theorem. And yes, so one, uh, one uh, show that each one of these uh, three inductive moves uh, is CCA representable. And here actually I just uh, listed the, I listed the graphs, I mean the diagrams, which show how we can realize the, these three moves uh, as CCA representation. Well, I just focus here on the quadrilateral uh, splitting. And yeah, so that's what I actually uh, try to explain. And I'm really sorry if I get confused and uh, thank you so much. And if there's any, any question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. Hey, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think it's time for questions, yeah. Any question? I'm not seeing any in the chat window. Um, imagine people are a little tired from a long day. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I have one. Uh, uh, did you uh, use a, a, some sort of computer? Yes. Uh, calculations and what? And like what? Uh, how did you pro? How did you program it? Like, oh yeah, using Sage uh, Sage um, uh, wow. language, yeah, and yeah. So we used, uh, I mean, some lemmas that we got from the com for, from the hand computations. For example, we know that every diagonal will be will be contractible immediately. So that uh, so that actually is our work, and. So I can actually say the main, I mean, to work on that algorithm, we have to take all the two to tight graphs, uh, which has actually at most eight vertices because I have this uh, theorem here saying that I, uh, my irreducible graph will, will has actually at, at most eight vertices. So what we took actually, the, f the first one take, uh, I mean, find all the tight graphs, uh, less than with vertices less than eight vertices, then take every such a graph, I mean every such two to tight graphs, and try to embed it in the torus. And uh, we use the rotation systems uh, to to find uh, such graphs actually. And uh, yeah, it was a um, very computational <laughs> uh, uh, work, but. Well, with eight vertices, is what well, it was actually very difficult, and we couldn't uh, do it on the computer uh, because with eight vertices, we have a huge number of uh, two two tight graphs. But because I have this theorem saying that, uh, saying that, uh, what is it? Sorry, G has at most two quadrilateral. Then uh, each reducible graph with the eight vertices it should has two quadrilateral faces. Then, for example, I will show you this one. So this is what uh, six vertices. Although there are two uh, quadrilateral faces, so I can actually build uh, the graphs with eight vertices by adding, uh, for example, here one, uh, one vertex with two edges, and here one vertex with, one vertex with two edges. Then I got, uh, one irreducible graph with eight uh, vertices. So it is. I just. I need just actually to add the vertices here. Then I will get all the two to tight torus graph with uh, eight vertices. So it wasn't very hard to find it by hand. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just say that I, I uh, see a lot of these um, surface graphs in knot theory. So, and again, invitation yeah. to come over and, and see what the work that you've done could apply to things that I care about. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Why not? I can also mention that uh, there's not theory in, this, in the story I talked about this morning. It has to do with MN torus knots and the Kovanov homology. So that's a very, but uh, we actually can calculate things in this context. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, well, I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit of an outside, but I'll, I'll connection to between knot theory and surfaces that there's a variant of knot theory, oh, uh, oh, uh, for knots that, oh, uh, how would I put it, kind of lie in a surface, oh, uh, as opposed to. Uh, you know, knots in, in R3, and that the analog of the knot diagram, the two-dimensional knot diagram for uh, R3 knots are knot diagrams with so-called virtual crossings. So if you look at literature on uh, knot theory with virtual crossings, of the, you'll find an extension of knot theory to uh, to uh, to knots that live uh, in like the neighborhood of a surface. Uh, but as I said, I, I'm not all that familiar with this stuff. Dan Silver and Susan Williams, who um, sometimes attend the, the Northeast for conferences, have worked on links on thickened surfaces. Yeah, yeah. 